This is great. Oh my God. This has got to be surreal for like everybody though. This is like virtual reality almost. Wow, this is cool. This is, if you don't know who I am, I am a full grown adult man that is friends with your children. <laughs> They love me. They give me their phone number. They invite me to their birthday parties. <laughs> this is real. That's why you're here. This is an intervention. <laughs> because if I get invited to one more slumber party, I am going to go. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you I'm there until the morning. <laughs> I'm uh, 34, uh, which in YouTube years means I'm dead. <laughs> I was not, honestly not expecting uh, so many kids to be here, and I'm basing this purely just on the comments you leave on my videos. <laughs> just based on these comments, I was not expecting these kids. I was expecting a sea of 35-year-old men that love to swear and don't know how to spell. <laughs> and I know we got some adult fans here as well, right? Sweet. Let's all be uncomfortable as a group, okay? <laughs> I think the kids are cool. Like, honestly, I don't know why there's this big separation. Why does it have to be, like, Disney-ified? Like, we're all here to have a good time, right? Yeah. And honestly, if you were an adult and you walked into a bar and all the stools were filled with toddlers, you'd be like, this is going to be hilarious. <laughs> I'm going to remember this forever. This is my new favorite bar. Because <laughs> I'm on the uh, Internet. i got to keep up with Internet stuff. Yeah, like, i got to know what dabbing is. I like you guys. <laughs> Round of applause if you like dabbing. I like where this is going. <laughs> Round of applause if you do not like dabbing. Yes! Thank you, Lord! I have found my people! Thank you! <laughs> I, I love how much I hate dabbing. <laughs> But I gained some newfound respect for it when I found out its history. I found out where dabbing came from. It takes two men, because no one man is great enough to invent a dab all on his own. It takes a dad and somebody that loves to piss him off. His boy. This is what happened. The boy pissed off his dad. Good job, boy. The dad went, do you know what this is? And the son said, the start of something incredible. <laughs> and the dad went, do you think you're funny? <laughs> and the boy went, no, no. <laughs> no, Papa. Please, Papa. That's true. You can look it up in the Bible. <laughs> true story in the Bible. Jesus tried to dab once. He did. Nobody liked it. He tried to dab once, and the whole world was like, no. No! That's my favorite joke! Uh, dabbing is actually, it really is from American Sign Language. It means I'm emotionally troubled, please help. It's also short for, I'm a dumbass, or... Uh, to which the only reply is, you are not alone! I am your superior! I like you guys, you're weird. <laughs> These are my people. So I thought we could spend tonight uh, kind of teaching you about how I went from subscriber zero to living the dream here in a theater next to where Ikea used to be. <laughs> All right, based on that response, I'm gonna need 10 minutes to come up with something else. <laughs> <laughs> I thought uh, I thought we could spend tonight. How about this? Talk, kind of teaching you guys how I, uh, how I started and how I got to here, living the dream in front of my favorite people in the entire world. <laughs> Just once. <laughs> I don't juggle these. <laughs> This is just a polite mugging. <laughs> you get a show, I get a wallet. <laughs> These three knives uh, have actually been with me all over the world. I got them from Sears. I love Sears. Love Sears. They have terrible security. <laughs> you can just take stuff. 
Knife one, two, and three. In Spanish, uno, dos, tres. In Roman, I, 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 I. <laughs> Alabama, one. <laughs> Another one! <laughs> Congratulations, here's your diploma. <laughs> I was so surprised at this lady at a show in Canada once. She goes, I'm from Alabama. I was so shocked. I went, no, you're not. She goes, my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Packed her bags. <laughs> moved to Canada that day. <laughs> Got up there, she's like, shoot, forgot the kids. <laughs> Come here, Juan. <laughs> Come here, another one. <laughs> you know, the toughest crowds I ever performed for were a group of Russians. And at Menelok, at the end of the show, one of the Russians came up to me. He said, you are so funny. I almost laugh out loud. <laughs> and then he stabbed me. <laughs> and that's when I bought the knives. <laughs> Knife one, I put it on my foot, I kick it from my foot to my hand, catch it, toss it under the leg, behind the back, whip it over the shoulder like that and catch. That's called a trick, that's when you guys are supposed to clap. This isn't the best time to point this out, but those are not the best seats. <laughs> Don't worry, I've done this all over the world. If something goes wrong, I've got tons of places to hide. <laughs> oh, man. Knife number two. I'll kick this up, and uh, even more people will clap. Uh, please wait for me to catch it. <laughs> please wait for me to make the completion. <laughs> Just, some people clap when it's like midair. Don't do that, okay? Don't, don't be the people that clap at funerals. <laughs> don't be like, Uncle Tommy, Dad. I'm, I'm gonna be rich. <laughs> we got his four-wheeler. <laughs> Let's ride him to his funeral. Lay him on the ground. We'll jump him. <laughs> of everyone in my family, my, my favorite relative, the one that was proudest of doing this, was my grandma. And she passed away, uh, but she got to see my show once. Um, and I was so proud that she got to come and so proud of myself. And at the end of the show, she came up and she said something I'll remember forever. Your career is not as glamorous as I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> so I sympathize with many of you. I clapped at her funeral. <laughs> okay. No, wait for me to catch it. <laughs> Because here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna be like clapping, I'm gonna be like, Aah! and you're gonna be the only one. Do it again. <laughs> Do it again. I am a demon. Do it again. <laughs> and I'm gonna be laying on the ground like, why? <laughs> I could have been somebody. <laughs> I could have won the Super Bowl. <laughs> if you see me with blood cut, please. Screw the ambulance, throw me in your car. <laughs> Drive me to Walgreens, I don't have health insurance. <laughs> they should change their motto to insurance you can pay for. <laughs> That's the only insurance I can pay for. It's like, I got an open wound, I need stitches. Uh, we got dental floss. <laughs> uh, should you at least sedate me? Uh, try five hour energy, it's all we got. <laughs> Is he dead? I've never felt more alive. <laughs> So if it hits me, don't clap. <laughs> if it hits someone in the audience, clap. It'll cover it up. <laughs> you don't understand. Half these kids are like, I got stabbed by Alex Clark. <laughs> I thought we were just going to get a picture. Now I get six months of therapy. <laughs> Best day of my life. <laughs> One, two, picture and I get it. Three, there it is. Now, knife juggling was, uh...
Thank you. Thank you. Knife juggling was actually knife juggling was actually invented back in the 1300s during the Renaissance, during the second season of Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> I love that show because <laughs> it's not a gritty remake. That's why I hated Breaking Bad. It's just a gritty remake of Bill Nye the Science Guy. <laughs> Gather round, kids. Everyone grab a needle from the alley. <laughs> We're going to learn about recycling. <laughs> Today's lesson is brought to you by mistakes your parents made. <laughs> I know your secret. And I will keep it. A lot, of a lot of parents right now are like, when you get home, we are unsubscribing right away. <laughs> and you're not inviting him to your birthday anymore. <laughs> This will be the best cheer yet because it's the first impressive thing I do with these. I didn't do it yet. <laughs> One, big cheer when I get this. Two, come on, Alex. Three. <laughs> Thank you. That feels great. <laughs> I love it. If, if you want to see more, say yeah. yeah. If you want more danger, say oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody throw me a baby. <laughs> that is hilarious. Somebody did it in Canada. <laughs> I was like, whoa, 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 don't be that bad. <laughs> they yelled back, I'm not a father. <laughs> I was like, what are you thinking? He goes, I'm the cool uncle, let's go. <laughs> I don't think anyone here would throw the baby. Not in America. Not in Canada either. But Russia. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> they would throw that baby every time. <laughs> Not because they're bad people. Not because they're bad people. But because I've seen the action movies. The best action sequences, always the Russians. They're the fiercest. The toughest, the mom, she would never throw the baby, but the dad, he'd be like, if he is ready, he will survive. <laughs> Today, my boy become a... Oh, shoot. <laughs> it's okay, I make another. <laughs> Bring out the bed. <laughs> Mrs. Doubles? I can also double the doubles. That looks like this. I can also do uh, this one right here with the spin. This one is called Chops. Sometimes the audience likes that one better from the back. Here we go. Oh my, the nips are gone. <laughs> Your children watch me every day. <laughs> They're like, take me with you, Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Under the leg. <laughs> Not everyone liked that one, that's okay. Under the leg the hard way to impress everybody. I didn't do it yet. But if you are enjoying this, I think you owe me some money. Under the leg the hard way. That one, that one used to be a lot harder until I messed it up. <laughs> the day you get that joke is the day you become a man. <laughs> and now, a personal favorite, all three knives behind the back. All three knives behind the back. Okay, hold on. It's gonna have to. 
Don't do that. <laughs> Don't be like, let's get Alex arrested. <laughs> He's gonna strip for children. <laughs> First show, Burbank. Second show, California State Penitentiary. <laughs> Please welcome Burbank's number one children's entertainer. <laughs> if you love this, come back next week for Shrek and Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Three knives behind the back. I heard some baritone in that one. <laughs> I heard, I'm glad I drove down from San Francisco. This is. <laughs> okay. Three knives behind the back. All three knives behind the back. <laughs> All three knives behind the back. All three knives behind the back. All three knives. How, how, come, how come none of you people are trying to stop me? You're just like, he didn't come in our car, whatever. <laughs> Sir, when you laugh like that, it makes my butt jiggle. <laughs> when do I tell you what I want for Christmas? <laughs> I want you to steal my nipples. No, don't do that. <laughs> this is... I can still feel you laughing. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but I'm gonna remember you for a long time. <laughs> all three knives behind the back. Wait for all three. All three knives. Oh my God, she did it. I love you. I want you guys to meet my fiance. Very cool woman. Is that your grandma? That's your mom. Nice. I fucked up. Either way, your mom is hot. And she's a cool lady. I think that deserves a clap. <laughs> no, no one's 23 shows. She's the first woman to chest bump. That's very cool. <laughs> very cool, mom. I had no idea those were pierced. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> you get a sip of water. <laughs> if you like what took me 10 years to learn, wait till you see what even a toddler can do with hands. <laughs> Did someone yell water? <laughs> Get that kid up here. We're going to call child services. <laughs> water shouldn't be exciting. This, get this back on. <laughs> Both ends of the spectrum here. <laughs> So yeah, I learned to juggle, and I started uh, street performing. It's uh, my first kind of job, and it's a cool job. It's the best job ever, street performing. You don't have a boss, you can do whatever you want. 
Uh, gather round, children, and I'll tell you how to live your life. <laughs> These are the secrets to pissing off your parents. <laughs> Rule number one, find a street corner. There are no more rules. <laughs> no, street performing is a great job. And I like it for the same reasons I like YouTube. If you work really hard, you push yourself, there's no gatekeepers. If you work hard, you'll get places. And I, I traveled all over the world as a street performer. I bought my first car as a street performer and paid rent and all that stuff. You can do that as a street performer. It's a good, good job. And my favorite part growing up was I got paid in cash. <laughs> yeah, lots of, lots of ones and fives when you first start street performing, which is very cool. And then uh, you have to bring it to the bank. And that's the worst part <laughs> because you have a bunch of singles and the man taking the money from you kind of wonders how you got them. <laughs> and they always say the same thing. I didn't think you would be this good, sir. <laughs> Which was very awkward because my mom worked at the bank <laughs> and she would try to make it better. She'd be like, it's not what you think. He works the streets. <laughs> that is not right, mom. No, he's very good. Do you want to see some photos? <laughs> He, tur he does tricks or turn tricks, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but you should see what he does with balls. It's amazing. <laughs> Do you know what juggling and doing that have in common? The same amount of people want to watch you do it. <laughs> so what the hell was I talking about? <laughs> YouTube, uh, can we dim the house? Great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, a lot of my first videos, when I started making YouTube videos, I, I took from my experiences, as anyone should, and I started telling stories about street performing. And so one of the, uh, the first uh, street performing stories I told was uh, about this time I was doing a street show for a crowd probably about this size, telling jokes for 45 minutes, and I got real thirsty. And this dude yells out, water for sale. I got bottled water. And I saw him, and I was like, yo, bro, I'd like a water. And he goes, did you call me bro? <laughs> and I got scared. <laughs> this is not how it goes at 7-Eleven. <laughs> it's like, you never call me bro. I got super scared. Never call me bro. I wanted to ease the tension. You hear me? And so I scrambled. I said the first thing that I thought would help. I said, sorry, daddy. <laughs> and he loved sorry, daddy. <laughs> he loved to hate sorry, daddy. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but when a white boy tells a black man, sorry, daddy, time stops. <laughs> People stop walking. Cars crash into each other on nearby streets. Planes land to see what happens. He goes, I am not your fam. I am not your family. You understand me, son? <laughs> what a mixed message. <laughs> And I was like, I understand, I'm adopted. <laughs> I started making more videos about telling stories and stuff like that. And I started, as I made videos about stories and noticing what people liked, I started noticing people more in the way they like, even just the way people walk, something as simple as that. Or like the way like a, a beautiful woman walks with like a, a, a purse. Like, do, do we have any like women with like a, a big purse with long straps here? Just a, a purse with, uh, if you do, uh, oh, perfect. There we go. Oh, you look a lot younger than I remember. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, Chris, our cameraman. Uh, let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> this is a great bag. What is your name for real? Karen. Karen, thank you for the purse. I learned a lot about purses. I learned a lot about women. And we're going to learn a lot about Karin today. <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> I'm not dumb. <laughs> what I learned most is, ladies, when you ask a man to carry your purse, what should the man say? No. Yes. We got a lot of yeses from women and a lot of angry men yelling no. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If you want to be a gentleman and you meet that woman and you love her and you want her to be around a long time, you take her purse the first time she asks. Right, ladies? That's right. And men, you carry it like this. Yay! I am, I am the chosen one! Come on, honey, hop on the helicopter! 
I can show you the world. <laughs> if you do that, uh, you never carry it again. <laughs> You gotta carry the purse. <laughs> I figured it out though, men don't like to carry the purse uh, because they don't wanna look silly. Like you ever see a lady like walk with her purse like this? No, <laughs> because she doesn't look this stupid. <laughs> Only a man can pull that off. <laughs> or if they're married, they got lots of kids, they're more whipped, it looks more like, oh my gosh. Sometimes I think the uh, women ask men to carry the purse as like a, a test of their worthiness. Thank God that doesn't work like Thor's hammer. Right? <laughs> Only he who is worthy can carry the purse. Oh, shoot. <laughs> he who is worthy shall gain an unconditional love. <laughs> please, please, please. He who is worthy shall gain a perfect wife. Yes, please, please. <laughs> he who is worthy shall gain two kids. Nah, oh, my God. <laughs> Anyone want to buy a bag? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, if you want to be a gentleman, there is a way to carry this bag and look like a man. Do you want to see it? Yeah! <laughs> Here you go, man. You get a prize. What, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Give her the purse back, man. <laughs> Do the right thing. <laughs> that was nice of you. You did another good thing. You felt good about doing the good thing, right? Yeah. When you do good things, you're rewarded. Come here. I'm going to give you something better than a hat. Something you remember forever. We're going this way. Come on. You're going to remember this forever. This little girl's gonna give you a kiss. <laughs> Get the, go back to your seat. Did you see this mom? She took out a camera. <laughs> she was like, my boy is a man today. <laughs> you stay away from her. You get a car and a job first, then you come back. <laughs> if you got really lucky, you got lucky though, because yesterday the little girl was like, get over here. <laughs> And the little boy was like, no, no, no. <laughs> so, started making videos about street performing and I started making YouTube videos while I was street performing. And I used to bring my laptop out and animate the videos uh, while I was waiting to do shows. And uh, that's how I, I did that for like six or seven years, working really hard, I still do like, I work like 12 hours a day sometimes when I'm making videos. Um, I hung all these lights up uh, for three hours today. <laughs> Water and light bulb crowd, I get it. <laughs> and I have to tell you guys I work hard because uh, a dad came up to me at show one and he was like, Alex, uh, a couple of months ago you made a video about being lazy and my son took it to heart. <laughs> he stopped standing up, Alex. <laughs> So could you please tell him you work? Otherwise, I think he's comatose. <laughs> so I do, I work hard. Um, doing this was not easy. Um, it was a lot of hard work because uh, I'm not like, a, I'm a big YouTuber, but I'm not a huge YouTuber. So we scrapped by like two or three people helped put this all together. And I have a team of two animators that also work really hard um, and make the videos when uh, I'm on the road and stuff. And those guys are all here. So if anyone that like works with me is here, could you stand up and could we give these guys a clap? <laughs> Okay, it's my moment. <laughs> and actually, the whole reason I started making YouTube was because I was street performer doing shows and I was like, how do I get people to know about me? And so like six, seven, almost eight years later, um, we finally did it, you guys. Yeah. That's so cool, thank you. And I, I feel great, very grateful for the position I'm in. Like, I imagine there's a lot of uh, maybe people that maybe I inspired or like even YouTubers here. Do we have any YouTubers here? 
Some kids, look at the, I got the same job as children. That's amazing. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. How old are you? Uh, 15. 15? I don't know if you know this. There's a seven-year-old on YouTube that made $20 million last year. <laughs> yeah, there's a seven-year-old that's better at his job than both of us. <laughs> Seven years old, $20 million. I started saying that in shows. I got an email from his lawyer that's like, it's actually 22. <laughs> do you think he keeps that money in a piggy bank? <laughs> he's like, hey, YouTube. Do you think he's like, hey, YouTube, I'm going to need that all in quarters. Okay? I need 88 million quarters. <laughs> $22 million, seven years old. Be honest. Do you guys right here think that boy earned that money himself? No. Wow, you guys are angry about that. <laughs> Well, there's enough of us here. Let's find them. <laughs> we could make that money ours. <laughs> okay, we could teach them what California is all about. <laughs> we don't need jobs. We just need one seven-year-old that doesn't know how to fight <laughs> and a van. <laughs> Do it for California. Do it for the economy. <laughs> okay, you guys are into that, all right. You're into hitting kids. Weird. <laughs> Let me tell you about where I grew up in Massachusetts. Uh, yeah. Something to know about us Massachusetts people. Uh, we don't hit kids. <laughs> and you shouldn't. The kid's only seven. We don't need to be that devious. He still likes candy. <laughs> all we got to do, tell him candy costs $22 million. <laughs> and we could have it all in one lollipop. <laughs> We're not stealing candy from a baby. We're selling it to him. <laughs> I'm so thankful that you guys came, and uh, I hope next year that we can do an even bigger show. This has been like the night of my life, so thank you for coming. Okay, so I'd like to uh, do a little virtual reality thing for you guys. Would that be cool? All right, let's do it. gonna stay long just till I have to pee too late it's actually it's my 300th birthday <laughs> 300 years old you live longer in the future thanks to something called make-believe <laughs> You'd all know what it is if you ever got off your goddamn computers. <laughs> Some good things happen in the future. Great things. The one is finally world peace. We got some twisted people in this crowd. It's finally world peace. Even cooler, people live on the moon. Well, well, it's really just Donald Trump, but we're all very happy about it. He said, I want to build a bridge to the moon. And when he got there, we made it a wall. Yeah. Some things are still the same, but a lot has changed. Ariana Grande, still 18. <laughs> Betty White, still hot. <laughs> God, she's hot. <laughs> but in my 300 years, I've learned some important things. The most important things there are. Number one, you know that saying, follow your dreams? I don't like that. <laughs> because you should chase your dreams. You should run. Run as fast as you can after that dream. Because one day you're going to be old. And you're not going to want to run anymore. <laughs> one day you're going to be older than me. And you're going to be saying, how is she still 18? <laughs> Second thing I learned, never. And I mean never be ashamed to wear diapers. 
It was a gift from God himself. <laughs> and I really mean it. Being here today, this was my dream. And I never would have got this far without each of you cheering for me along the way. Thank you. So, if you have a dream, even if it's crazy, do it. Even if it's tracking down a seven-year-old boy worth $22 million, <laughs> that's your choice, not mine. <laughs> Fill the world with love, with kindness. Don't cuss until you turn 18. <laughs> and chase the dream. If you do that, you'll die proud. Just like me, just like grandma, because one day we'll all be gone. All there'll be is Ariana Grande. <laughs> Not as hot as Betty White. With that said, there's only one thing left to say in the bottom of my heart. We have merch available in the lobby. Thank you guys so much. That was my show. Thank you. Thank you guys. Head to alexclarkcomedy.com right now and tell me what city I should tour to next. If you write it in the comments, it's less likely my team will see it. So please go right now before I finalize my next tour.